Now today we're looking at an air pump for the air injection system. So let's jump over to the vehicle and I'll show you on how you can quickly tackle this job. Now the air pump lives right behind the front bumper on the driver's side. Now in order to get access to this, I simply removed the front wheel along with the inner fender well. If you need a guide on how to do this, I'll include a link on the top right hand side of the screen showing on how to remove the entire plastic assembly. Now there's a couple of ways we could do this, but let me make this as simplistic as possible. We have an air pump, we have a relay, and then we have an electric sensor that works within the system. But let's just first test the pump to see if it's working. So now we need to apply power to the air pump and see if it spins. So you can use a cordless battery pack in my case, I have an RC battery pack that pushes out 11 volts. And then I have two wires with alligator ends. This will allow us to send power from the pack to that pump. So what we need to do is find the electrical connector. And if we look right here, we have a harness connector. And at the roughly 9 o'clock position, there's a tab. Press down on the tab and pull on the body. So looking at the harness connector, we have a black wire, so that is our ground wire. Okay, so that will be, inside this little plastic body, there are two terminals, which you'll see once I remove the pump from the vehicle later on. But I'm just inserting the negative lead from the battery onto the terminal that corresponds with the black wire. And then I have the red wire going directly to the positive lead on the battery and if the pump is good it should spin so let me first set this up so you guys can see this here we go so it is in very good working condition so that tells us that the pump is working correctly which is good news but what if you have a trouble code and the pump is working correctly what do you do what's the next step so now going forward we can check the fuse the electrical current sensor the relay and all of the wiring. Now this I already filmed, so I'm just going to insert it right now. So there's a fuse panel that lives on the driver's side. This is an auxiliary fuse panel. So it's not to get confused with the main fuse and relay panel on the vehicle. This is an auxiliary one. And right here we can see air pump. It's a 60 amp fuse. So if we remove this, Right here is our 60 amp fuse, and this is in perfectly fine shape. So first verify that the fuse is in good shape. So we know that the fuse is in good shape. So let's go on to the next step, and that's taking a look at this guy right here. This is an electrical current sensor. I did a video on this a few days ago, but this will check the wiring from this sensor up to that fuse. So at the 12 o'clock position, there's a tab, Press on that tab, don't pull from the wiring, pull from the body. Now for this next step, we need a digital multimeter. Very easy to use, inexpensive, $23 off Amazon. And as always, I will include a link in the description box below in case you happen to need any tools. So now we're just turning on the ignition. Now the other thing I'll be using is a probe kit. Not necessary, but just makes the job a little bit easier. Now let's plug in the leads that come with the multimeter. And then you want the volts DC setting. Now I'm taking the probe and inserting it into the harness connector. Now you can use a paper clip, just make sure it's not too thick. You want a thin paper clip so it does not damage the terminals. So the probe is running directly to the red wire of the multimeter and your black wire is body ground. That's any good metal point. So I'll just clamp this. This is the throttle and let's see if we have a reading. We want to see battery voltage and nothing is going on here. So let's check the other terminal. So we checked the left. Let's go ahead and check the right. And now we do have battery voltage reading at the multimeter. Now, if you do not see a reading here, then you have a break between that wire harness and the fuse that we just checked. And one of the easiest ways to find any breaks in the wiring 
is a tool called Power Probe. And I'll include a link again in the description box, but it makes it incredibly easy to find any shorts, any opens, anything like that whatsoever. So now we know that the fuse is good. We know that the wiring running from this sensor to the fuse is good. But how about the sensor itself? Going back to the multimeter, now we need to check for continuity. Continuity just means two points make a connection. So look for the Wi-Fi hotspot symbol on the multimeter. Makes it super easy. Now watch, if I touch these two wires, we have continuity. So taking the leads from the multimeter, one to the left terminal, and the other to the right terminal. And there we go. So we have continuity. That tells us that this is in good working shape. If you have no continuity, then you need to replace this sensor. And if you need a guide on how to replace this, I'll include a link on the top right hand side of the screen. But since we're done here, let's go ahead and reconnect the harness connector. And now we're going to look at the air pump relay, which is that guy right there. So now we're going to check if power is getting from the electrical current sensor to the relay. So we need to disconnect this harness connector right there. Now to remove it from the bracket, I'm just pressing down this tab right here. And with my other hand, I'm going to press it out. Oh, let's see, hold on. The camera is sort of in my way here, but hold on. There we go. And then at the 12 o'clock position, a little hard to see, but right where my index finger is, you press down on the tab and just remove the harness connector. And then just like we did with the electrical current sensor, we want to verify that we are getting battery voltage here. So turn on the ignition key. So just like before, black goes to body ground, and then red is going to our harness connector. So if you're using a paper clip, just touch the red lead to the paper clip or use the probe. And let me first set this up. Go ahead, insert the probe. Let's start with this guy first. As you can see, there's no reading. So let's check the other guy. And now, we have a reading of battery voltage 11 and a half to 12 volts. Now, if you're not receiving any power here, you have a break between this harness connector and the electrical current sensor. Once again, the power probe tool will save you a lot of time finding that break. So up to this point, we've checked the fuse, the electrical current sensor and the wiring running to the fuse and the wire harness running from the electrical current sensor directly to the air pump relay. So as you can see, we're just simply following the wiring to make sure that everything's powering up correctly. So now we're looking up at the relay and there's a small harness connector right here. Right there's a tab. I'm going to remove it right now. And then once we remove this harness connector, we have a black wire. This is our ground wire. In other words, we want to verify that the relay is grounded correctly. So we need the multimeter. So the black wire is going into this left terminal. So I'm just inserting the probe. And then on the multimeter, again, we are doing continuity, which means two points make a connection. And the black lead coming from the multimeter goes to any good metal point. And there we go. So that tells us that we have continuity and no breaks in the wiring. And now there are just two more tests to verify all of the wiring is in good shape. So right here is the harness connector going to the air pump. Go ahead and remove it. Now looking at the harness connector that plugs into the air pump, we have a white wire with a green stripe. And the harness connector running to the relay also has a white wire with a green stripe. So what we're going to do is again, check for continuity. Make sure that the air pump and the relay are connected. There are no breaks. So taking my probe, it happens to be this terminal right here. So inserting the probe, white with the green stripe. And let's see if we have continuity. And with the other probe coming from the multimeter, 
we have continuity. So once again, if you do this test and you're not receiving continuity, you have a break between the relay and the pump itself. And for this final test, again, still on continuity, black is going to body ground, and then my red lead is going to the black wire now of the harness connector, and we should have continuity. So let's see, there we go. Now, if you're not getting continuity here, then you have a break between this harness connector and body ground. So in order to remove the air pump, we have two air lines, one right here, another one running through the bottom, which you'll see in a second. Now these lines can be really hard to remove simply because it's been on here for 21 years. This is a big time saver. These are pliers made specifically to loosen up hoses. And it will save you quite a bit of time. The other thing that's useful is a trim removal tool set. So it doesn't really scratch up anything. There we go. And then we have two 12 millimeter fasteners. And then we can take this right from the vehicle. And here's our air pump. And that's how you can test the entire system. The pump itself, of course, the relay, the fuse, and the electrical current sensors. Always, I hope this helps a number of you out there. And thank you for watching.